but if you counted in the last video, Peter's given a prize. It's the 25th of the month, which means Christmas of the month, Christmas day of the month. How exciting. How do you like my jacket? My friend Mary uh, made this jacket for her dad. It's her oldest UFO. She just finished it at the retreat I was at this weekend. And I said, Mary, can I borrow your jacket so I can do my letters for Santa in a Santa jacket? And she said, yes. So I'm excited about being here. And uh, if you haven't already done it, move over to the Moda blog so that you can get all the downloads. Now, this is the downloads from the first Moda blog. It's the introduction. It tells you that you need to buy the pattern. We have the patterns here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. Just give us a call. Ask for Jennifer. She knows all about the program. She'll set you up just lickety split, okay? So uh, we have a limited supply. So please uh, call just as soon as you can if you want to do this program and do it like we're going to do it. Or if you want to use the pattern and go off and do your own thing, we'd love to see that. We'd like for you to post pictures on our insider group. But you need the pattern to do the program. And uh, so that's kind of what it explains on this piece of paper. And then you go to the Moda blog, and they, let me unclip this. They give you all kinds of information you can print. So you can't print the pattern. You buy the pattern, and then this is the things we're going to do with it. There's the quilt, 75 by 94. Here's a different quilt that one of the motive uh, gals, Allison, did. She changed her words up to be more religious. She's got uh, Feliz Navidad, um, Wise Men. I forget what else she says. Mankind is, uh, no, what is, oh, a new king is born. It's hard to read upside down. So that's kind of a fun one. Then this one is, uh, I think, movies, Christmas movies in kind of bright tones. That's kind of fun. Here's what we're going to do. And here's the Moda solids. I pulled them out for you so you could kind of see what we're working here with. Uh, and I'm not going to just use solids now. They just use solids. But we got this bundle of uh, Fat Quarters in. It's called Candy Cane Lane. It is so cute. And we have bundles put together for you in a bag. And um, so if you want to add to your own collection or if you want to start a Christmas collection, we've got it available for you. Here kind of explains how to not just make the, it won't tell you how to make the letters. But it kind of tells you how to do the sashings in between and the borders. And that's something you're going to need to know. Here's some other uh, ideas that uh, people were submitting. So there's one. Look at this, how they made a star and then they made a Christmas tree out of the words. They got bigger as the words uh, went down. That's kind of interesting. Here's a snowball with ho, ho, ho all the way around. That's fun. And then you can download these uh, three. I'm going to show those to you here. Look, it's Letters to Santa planning sheet. If you want to go rogue and do your own words or lay it out differently, uh, you can do that. There's a little worksheet. And then we've got here, you can color it in if you want it another uh, colorway besides the one that Moda's offering or the one you see here. And then here's words, tons more words. So that's exciting. So that's what you're going to get if you download, if you print the first, the introduction. Then this time, if you go to the blog today, you're going to see the words. The words for this time are joy. And again, it's going to show you the uh, spacing, the way to space it and give you those measurements so that you can do that. Merry Christmas. And you'll notice these words have the white background and the letters are red. And the Merry Christmas, the letters are white and the background is red. Here's Twinkle and Joy. Then there's filler blocks. And if you want to make the quilt that Moda's offering, 
you have to do three filler blocks, three of each one. Each month we're gonna get filler blocks, and of this month, so you need three. So you need three stars, and there they are in the block placement, in the quilt placement. Three wreaths, there they are in the placement. You can print all this off the Moda blog, and there's the house. And then there they are in the quilt, the three places they are in the quilt. And then, I'm kind of keeping mine all together in groups. That with that. Then this is more of what you'll see on the blog today. You'll see a picture of the whole quilt. You'll see how they are using their different fabrics for the words. And here's their uh, blocks, and they made them out of this line, this collection right here. So that's kind of fun. There are the words and the filler blocks and where they go in the quilt. Here's some good general information you need to know. Here's another idea. Uh, my friend Tammy, she made the Christmas, Merry Christmas garland, but then she also made Happy Valentine's Day, and her red and white words will work for 4th of July, uh, any kind of, of uh, holiday that has red and white. That would be a good reason. Look at how she just scattered them on the tree and then put Moda down the middle of the tree. That's pretty funny. But you could just use them as ornaments around the tree. And then she put them on top of a stocking so that the stocking, this is Tammy's. This must be Michael's. That's her grandson. Or maybe it's Michelle because Michelle's doing this too. They want you to leave some comments and then some just some more information. So those are the downloads. Go there today. I'm going to take this jacket off because it's really hot. Santa is leaving the building. Woo! Bye, Santa. Okay, that was kind of fun. So that's from the motor blog. Now, you'll need that information because we're not going to repeat their information. We're going to give our own information, okay? So the first thing I did was I took my pattern and I reprinted it and then I cut the letters apart Now I'm not going to show them to you real uh, uh, close up because I don't want you to uh, I don't want to break the copyright okay but there they are and I just cut them apart and I put them in order so a b c d e f g so all I have to do is go and hunt them and then I pick the ones out for the word I'm ready to do Rudolph I've done joy there's my joy i'm having joy here's my mary here's my christmas i don't know if my arms are long enough for christmas but there it is my christmas can we get it all in there peter yep okay mary and christmas and here's my twinkle, and I just love this. Look at how I used the ornaments from the collection. Isn't that so neat? And it was directional fabric, so I really had to concentrate. But if I can do it, you can do it. Twinkle, I love that. You have to use the spacing. So that's kind of fun. And then my next word is Rudolph, and I'm going to use these uh, candy canes. The way I do it now, we've got fat quarters. And uh, so I just fold my fat quarter in half, and then I cut strips. Actually, I would cut it like this. And I would lay down. Now, all my letters are based on one and a half inch strips. I'm not gonna give you the, all the increments, but they're based on that. So I would cut a couple one and a half inch strips to get me started. And then I can subcut whatever it says on the pattern. If you're using a directional print, you may wanna think about what direction it goes before you cut. So that's a little tip there. Now, my big tip was to cut up your letters. If 
you want a fussy cut, like I'm going to make the house here. Here's my house. And I want to fussy cut the door. I want Santa, just like my friend Tammy. I'm stealing this idea from her. You'll see it on the Moda blog. See, here's Santa putting the star on top of the tree. Can they see that real good, Peter? Right there. I found one that was close to the edge so I wouldn't waste a lot of fabric. Now he has to be, let's see, E has to be one and a half by two. So three quarters, there's my three quarter mark, kind of has to be in the middle of him. So I made that slice. Now I'm gonna turn him around and cut one and a half from that cut. Some one and a half, making sure he's all, I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit because I want that tree to be in there. So there you go. All right, one and a half. Since I moved that over a little bit, I'm going to cut a little bit more off of this side. And then I'm going to cut so that I have a quarter of an inch away from his hat. Because I do not want to lose his little hat. So you can see that, that that's a quarter of an inch away. And now my measurement has to be two inches. So from that cut, I'm gonna come down here. And I know this seems to be cumbersome, but if you want a fussy cut, this is how you do it. Did I tell you my name is Dawn, if you're new to my channel? My name is Dawn. I work at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. We're happy that you're gonna be doing this with us. And look, there's my little Santa. Isn't he cute? He's a very cute Santa. So let's go over and put him in the house. Peter's behind the camera. Say hi to Peter. Hi, Peter. Now, originally I cut these trees. Is that two and a half by one and a half? Two by one and a half? E. What's E? One and a half by two. Maybe I got him too big. He's one and a half. Let's see about my two inches. Oh, I cut him way too big. Okay, so let's. We might have to cut a tiny little bit of his hat off. Hmm. I'd rather have his hat than the bottom of the tree. I'm going to cut there. You kind of just have to decide. And then I'm going to cut two inches. Two by one and a half. So do I want the trees or do I want the Santa? Oh, he's so darn cute. <clears throat> That's what's fun about using this other fabric. I'm gonna use these later. I'm gonna tell you about those. Okay, I've got the instructions right here in front of me. I'm gonna put them up here on my board. That's what I like to do. I've cut all the uh, elements out. They're all right here. And I'm gonna start by making this flying geese unit. And it tells you exactly how to do it right here. And I've already started it. I laid my block on top of my rectangle and I sewed from corner to corner. 
And then if you wanna take your rotary cutter and go ahead and cut a quarter of an inch away from that seam, from that uh, sewing line, you can do that, but I'm not uh, particular. I can pretty much see about what a quarter of an inch is. Then I'm gonna use my clapper here and I'm gonna press open. I'm an open presser. People uh, have their own ideas whether they wanna open their seams or press to one side. I like to open my seams. So I use my clapper to help me do that. All the things that uh, we're showing you, of course, are available here at Always and Stitches. And Peter does a good job of putting links down in the video. And so I put on the other side. Now, you have to flip this over before you sew this piece on or you won't be happy. Because if you don't, you won't be able to flip it after you've sewed this seam. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press that open and I'll have my flying geese unit. So that's how you make a single flying geese unit. And that's gonna be the roof of our house. Isn't that cute? Now let's go ahead and sew this together. Our door and our side walls. I've got a quarter inch foot here on my uh, sew machine. I'm gonna go at the same time and hold this and sew this together. I like to pin, but this one I'm gonna just sew. I don't have any seams in the middle that I need to be content with. Open that up, pick up this other piece. I'll save this piece for something else. Cause when I saw that Tammy had fussy cut this little Tammy or Michelle, I don't know which one of them did it. But when they when I saw them doing that, I thought, well, that was really cute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy that idea. That's what this sew along is all about. It's getting ideas from each other. So my two suggestions for this video was to cut out your letters, make copies of them, cut them out. And then my second idea is to uh, make it's a boy or it's a girl banners and use them as gender reveals. Like if your church group uh, has showers often, you could use them as gender reveals. Wouldn't that be fun? It's a boy, it's a girl, gender reveals, little banners. That's kind of fun. So that's my other idea. We're going to have lots of ideas on the channel. We're going to be here the 25th, sometime after the 25th, because Moda is going to do theirs on the 25th uh, of July, August, September, October, November. We're going to do five words. So that's not hard to keep up. They give all kinds of suggestions on how to uh, how to do the letters. Now there's a big controversy over at Moda, I guess, on should we uh, starch or no starch. Now I'm not going to starch. I'm very used to sewing small pieces, and I don't feel the need to starch. Some people like to starch. Some people like to starch the the fabric so it feels like cardboard or paper. That's just not my deal, so you can try it, see if you like it. It'd be interesting to take a poll to see how many people like to starch versus those who don't. Now, don't put Santa upside down in the doorway. That'd be pretty 
silly. So pay attention to the way he's going. Did you see that? And then I would just sew these two sides on, press them open, and then sew these on and press them open, okay? So there's that, that's the house block. I'm not gonna do that, you know how to do that. That's just straight sewing. So that's the block house. Now let's move over to the star. The star is kind of fun because it takes flying geese also, but she's gonna make, uh, she gives instructions, and I say she is either Michelle or Tammy, somebody over at Moda, gives the instructions to make uh, four flying geese at the same time. So I've taken the background block, I've taken the uh, smaller blocks, and I've laid one on top of the other on a diagonal. And you can see that I haven't drawn a line from point to point. Now you could, and if you don't have this tape, you should. You should draw a line from point to point. That's gonna get cut off. So if you wanna draw it with a dark pencil or something dark, it's gonna get cut off. So go ahead and draw from corner to corner. But I have this nifty, nifty tape. It's called Diagonal Seam Tape. And it's by Cluck Cluck Sew. So we have it here at the quilt shop. It's uh, $8.99 and it'll last you a long time. And it's like washi tape. You know, it's it's not it's not highly sticky, but it stays in place. And I you t you you find your needle by taking a ruler and sliding it up and finding your needle. And then this this red line represents your needle. And then this black line is a quarter inch away from your needle on that side and a quarter inch on that side. And then what I did was I took a second piece of tape. And I put it right along the first piece of tape. So now I even have a half an inch and a three quarter inch away from my needle for if I need that. So there you go. That's the diagonal seam tape. It is yummy and I love using it. This blue tape you see under here, I used to draw. I used to put this blue tape down and actually draw these lines. No more drawing, Dawn. Why didn't I invent this myself? Man, so I just take this, put it on the diagonal, and just so, and see my point here is right on my quarter inch line. My This is my uh, sewing, uh, my needle line right there. So I'm a quarter inch away from my needle line and I'm just making sure that that point of that fabric just rides right along. And now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna cut if you drew the line, you'll be cutting on the line. If you didn't, just from tip to tip, you're going to um, cut. Then I'm going to get my clapper, and I'm going to open these seams. I don't really iron. I just press. And see how that looks like a little heart. Isn't that cute? This is a snazzy way to make four at a time. And that's what you need for this Christmas star block. Four half square triangles. And the measurements are right on the download that you just download the pattern right from the Moda website. Now I'm gonna take my other two blocks that I have cut out and put them on the diagonal. Just snuggle it up right to the point of that heart. And again, I'm gonna sew on each side of the diagonal, quarter inch. Just snuggle that fabric right there like that. It's gonna look like that. Kinda looks like Mickey Mouse ears too, doesn't it? Peter's being awfully quiet today. He's having issues with his computer. It's making him 
sad. Remember when we didn't have computers? That's the simpler, that's the pioneer days, you know. And then Santa brought us all these computers and iPhones and iPads and everything that has I in front of it. That's Santa. What was he thinking? Okay. So see that now. Again, I'm going to go back. Get my cutting mat. I have all these little items here right at my reach because I just love being able to, when I sit down at the sew machine, I just love to just sit and sew. And if I need to iron, I don't want to be popping up to iron. I want to have a little iron. If I just need to cut a little thing, I just like to have everything right here beside me. Just so I can just uh, be right here. Now look there. I got four. Flying geese units, lickety split. Four flying geese units, lickety split. Look at that. Press those open or to one side, however you want to. It's up to you. It's your quilt. You own it. Your quilt, you do what you want. As for me and my quilt, we're going to press open. We're not going to starch. Now, uh, did you notice that I had all the elements laid out on these boards? This is my flannel board, and I just like to have them in all different sizes. So, this is left over. So my whole thing is laid out right here with my sheet of paper. So I know which block I'm doing by laying that with my sheet of paper. Now I've got to uh, square these flying geese units up. Let me go get my square ruler. And I think right here in the instructions, look, it's gonna tell me that I need to trim them to one and a half by two and a half. One and a half by two and a half. So it's going to be one and a half this way and two and a half this way. Well, I certainly don't want to cut my point off. So I have to figure out what the middle of two and a half is, and I believe it's one and three quarters is half. So I'm going to set that down at the one and three quarters. My ruler, oh, evidently that's not right. One and one quarter. One and one quarter and one and one quarter. Oh, yeah, one and one quarter. Sorry, wasn't thinking right. One and one quarter. And my ruler here, this is so good. I've got these creative grid rulers. It's got this quarter inch marking all the way around. So I know when I lay my ruler down on that flying geese unit where my point is going to land. And I want it to land right underneath that quarter inch marking. So I'm going to put that quarter inch, there's one and a quarter right at my point, and I'm going to make sure that it's my point is a quarter of an inch and just like one hair below the quarter inch. And I'm just gonna cut this side and cut along that side. Now, if you're shaving off more than just a little whisper and those triangles, then you've done something wrong. I'm gonna flip that around. And now that two sides are squared up, I'm just gonna put it on the one and a half by two and a half is that right let me check one and a half by two and a half so there's my two and a half inch marking there's my one and a half inch marking and i'm going to trim the other side and there's my perfectly squared up 
flying geese unit. Let me do that again. You know, I got four times to mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to kind of look at the bottom and make sure. These are pretty much right on what they should be. So really, all I'm trimming off are those little bitty uh, triangles. We're not calling them dog ears because we don't want to be cutting off our dog's ears. I have schnauzers, and their ears have already been clipped. Uh, Chloe, Chloe's and, and biscuits. Biscuits haven't been clipped. My puppies are Chloe, Biscuit, and Gizzy. So I'm going to make sure that I'm at one and a quarter. Making sure my point is right below my quarter inch mark. One and a half by two and a half. One more to go. One and a half by two and a half. And the center is at one and a quarter. Yeah, they, they didn't oversize them very much. So, like I said, if you're getting more than a little sliver, you've done something wrong. Recheck your measuring, recheck your cutting, recheck your pressing. Okay. Now, look what I have. I made my center this plaid. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Now, again, I'm going to make three stars three houses and three wreaths. I don't think you really need to see me sew this together because this is pretty straight sewing. You've got this to this to this, this to this to this, 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 and this. And then you would sew your borders on, okay? You'd sew your sides on and then you'd sew your top and your bottom. And then here it tells you, uh, the instructions always tell you what size it's supposed to end up being. So we've done the house and we've done the star. That was fun. And now we're gonna do the wreath. Okay. Now the wreath has a little bit of a different component. It has a half square triangle. So I laid my fabrics right sides together you're supposed to have white ones and green ones and red ones and uh, green ones. I've already made my white and green ones and I've made one set of my red and green ones. And what I did was I laid that together and remember that line, if you need to draw it from diagonal to diagonal, you can, but because I've got this tape, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to lay that in my sew machine there. And I am following this line right here because it's a quarter inch away from my needle. And then I can just cut between. Now, if you want to use your rotary cutter, you can. But these are oversized. And if you've never been with me before and sewn with me before, this is one of my favorite rulers in the whole wide world. It's the Quilt in a Day four and a half inch triangle square ruler. There's a four and a half inch, a six and a half inch, and a nine and a half inch. I do a lot of miniature sewing, so I use the four and a half inch one a lot. Now you can see the way I've got it right now. If you would measure right here, 
it's going to be a one and a half inch half square triangle. Two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. So the red lines are half inch increments. But if you turn it around this way, you've got whole increments. One, two, three, four. But it says I need to make my half square triangles one and three fourths inch. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Am I not going to be able to use my tool? No. See these markings all along here? Those are eighth inch increments. I have these nice arrow stickers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my arrow right at the one and three-fourths inch mark so that my eye will go right to the one and three-quarter inch mark. And I'm going to show you how that works. Now, a lot of people open these up and press and then size up all four sides. But this tool allows you in two swoops of the rotary cutter to cut the exact size you need. And what I'm gonna do is this line, now it's gonna be hard to see because this is, well, let me turn it on this way. Maybe that won't be as hard to see. But this line and this line, I'm gonna put on my seam, on my sewing line. So that one and three quarters is on my sewing line. And then I'm going to cut and now, when I cut my little triangles off and I open that seam up, it's a perfect one and three quarter inch half square triangle. Let's do it again, okay? If I wanted it to be two inches, I'd slide down to this line, but I want it to be one and three quarters. So on my sewing line, let's say it together, on the sewing line, you put the one and three quarter inch mark, and I don't have to hunt for it because I've got my little arrows right there pointing right to it. I can just do that all day long. So I had to do it for all of these that are here on the wreath. Now I'm going to press that open. And here at uh, Always in Stitches on our uh, YouTube channel, we are going to be here sometime after, hopefully the 25th or a day or two after, depending upon what day the 25th falls on. We'll be doing a video giving out uh, lots of fun ideas and showing how to make the extra blocks. So now, got my... block all laid out. This one goes this way. And that one goes that way. So there's my wreath block. And I'm going to sew those together. I'm going to start by sewing this one to this one. I'm not going to pin because they're little blocks and I don't have any seams that could interrupt underneath my feed dogs. I'm going to pick up the next two. I'm going to pick up the next two. I always have my stiletto handy in case that uh, block should get misaligned here at the end. Keep those in order of the way I sewed them so I know that they go back in a certain order. I'm going to take my clapper and 
open the seams here. I've got my chart right here in front of me so I can see how they go back together. Now, nothing says she couldn't take these patterns and leave the words off and just have a fun little quilt just with these patterns, with these extra little uh, bonus pat uh, blocks. That might be cute. Maybe you just want to make one word. Maybe you just want to do the Merry Christmas. Okay, now I'm going to take and I'm going to sew the next block to the row. Christmas in July. What you need to do is don't don't make yourself a cup of hot cocoa because it's kind of hot here. I mean, if you're someplace where it's nice and chilly, where would that be, Peter? That's nice and cold this time of year. Alaska, I guess. Anyway, someplace nice and cool. If you want to make yourself a cup of cocoa, that'd be fun. But put you on some Christmas music. Get your Christmas mojo going. You know, they've already got the Christmas supplies up at Hobby Lobby. Pretty soon they'll be putting the Christmas candy out. It's ridiculous if you ask me. Nobody asks me. So I just freely give out my wisdom. Too early for Christmas candy too early for Christmas decorations at the Hobby Lobby. But if you're going to be making stuff, you know, if you're going to be making things like we're making right now, we've got our Christmas fabric here so that you can get fabric for Christmas projects, making stockings for everybody. Wasn't that fun the way Tammy put the letter and the top? You could sew it onto the in the cuff. Everybody in the family. Their initial. Okay. Now essentially we have three rows. We're gonna put them together. Now this is the reason I wanted to make this, is because now you'll see that you'll need to match up these seams. And what I'm going to do is what I um, kind of line them up and then I fold this back and I fold it back quite a ways, about a half an inch, and walk that seam up and make sure that that seam is lining up with the seam underneath it and then giving a little pin. Peter will post the kind of pins I like. Uh, they're very uh, sharp. They're thin. And they're not real long. Some people think you have to stick them way down in. You don't have to stick them way down in. All you need to do is just to get a little pinch to keep them pinned, okay? Now see this right here? I'm not gonna pin that because I'm gonna take care of that when I get there with my sewing machine. If I need my stiletto to push that up, I can do that. But I'm not gonna pin at the end there. There we go. Don't run over your pen. Okay, so see how it's separated a little bit there? I'm gonna get my stiletto. Oh, I push that back together. And I'm gonna hold that with my stiletto. Oh, I'm gonna take this pin out first. Okay, I'm gonna hold that with my stiletto. And my stiletto can get right underneath there next to my uh, needle and not be afraid it's gonna poke my finger. Because my clapper is right, oh, I put it over here, sorry, Peter. Because my clapper's right here and I've got a little miniature iron set up over here. I don't have to get up to press my seam. Press my seam. I'm using some white on white. Boy, you have to really pay attention if you've got it on right side versus upside down. <laughs> Gotta pay attention. 
So, so are you digging out your Christmas fabric? If you don't have a collection of Christmas fabric, I, uh, like I said, we've got those fat quarter bundles made up for you. You may just want to add some of our fat quarter bundles to what you've already got. Uh, you may want to throw some solids in there, or you may want to do it all out of Bella solids. And we have those here too. We have um, we have the measurements. So if you want to just call us and say, "Hey, I'd like the whole kit for the letters to Santa out of the Bella solids," we'd be happy to cut you a kit. Um, Jennifer is our gal, and also Patty. Patty and Jennifer are our personal shoppers, and you call the shop and ask for them, and they will take care of you. They are so good at their jobs. They know exactly um, what we're talking about. They know all about this program. Now, I did not notice that until I got it made, but look, there's a friendship star in the, so in the middle of that wreath. Oh, I think that's so pretty. That friendship star right in the middle. I'm gonna give it another little press because that one red fabric was a little wrinkly. It still is. I didn't get it pressed very good before I started. But there you go, there it is, the wreath. And now, I'm gonna put my sides on. And I think I will pin because now I have these seams and I don't want my feed dogs coming along, catching that seam and folding it up. So I'm gonna pin right there. If you're not a pinner, you don't have to pin. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. And so I, I really like to pin. I want them all to go like they're supposed to. Now these blocks, because the letters are not square, these blocks are not going to be square. They're going to size up to, when they're done, seven and a half by four and a fourth. That's a weird size. Seven and a half by four and a fourth. But that's what they need to be to work along with the letters. So you definitely want to pay attention to the measurements. I hope I did that right. It doesn't look like I cut those ones long enough. supposed to put those on first well, we'll see well it says does it say I haven't read it it's always good to read the instructions before you start sewing this one's like a quarter of an inch bigger than it's supposed to be I must have got the uh, two from the other block mixed up so what am I going to do? See how that's a quarter of an inch too big? Probably have to cut one for my one of my other blocks. I have to cut it. I'm just going to cut that. I knew it was too big. I'm not going to try and make it work. by uh, leaving it big. Now, are these the correct size? I wonder how big that is. Where did the long one go? is six and a half. It's supposed to be seven and a half. These are 
Gee, so it's five and a half. That's what these are, five and a half. That couldn't have been sewed on there first. What were these two side pieces? I bet they're too big. These two side pieces, they're F. Oh yeah, they were only supposed to be one and an eighth. That's my problem right there. These side pieces were only supposed to be one and an eighth. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut them down. See how much has to come off. One and an eighth, that's little, isn't it? So it looks like to me, about three eighths needs to come off. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna lay it this way, and I'm gonna cut off three eighths off of each end. Yeah, I picked up the wrong sides because I cut all three of these blocks out together so I've picked up the wrong sides and sewn them on. Look, there's the sides I needed. <laughs> oh my God. But you know what? It's better to be too big than too little, don't you think? Yeah, and you just fix it as you go. We're all gonna make mistakes. We're all gonna make them. Now that should fit. See when you measure right, cut once. It doesn't say measure twice, cut once. I think that's the same. So now, lay that on top. I'm gonna pin again. And if you're using white on white background fabric, you wanna make sure that your print is right sides together. Ouch. It's hard to tell, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, it's hard to tell. So if I had some Christmas music going, you could listen to my Christmas music, but we, we kind of have to abide by the copyright law, so we really can't play Christmas music. Maybe Peter will sing us some Christmas music. His favorite Christmas song is some kind of crazy, wacky coyote song. I don't know what it is. What is it? No, donkey. It's a donkey. Some kind of wacky donkey Christmas song. Tell us what that is, Peter. It's Dominic the Italian Donkey. Dominic the Italian Donkey. Now, what could be any more Christmassy than that? Now, my favorite Christmas song is Stretchy Pants by uh, Carrie Underwood. She ate so much food, she had to have her stretchy pants on. And I so can relate to that. So, that's one of my favorite ones. Tell us your favorite one. I'm going to sew this other side on, then our little wreath will be done. And what we would love for you to do is to post pictures on our insiders group. If you're not part of our insiders group, it is always in stitches. One. No, I think it's always... And I never can remember because our website, our Facebook is always in Stitches Noblesville or always in Stitches 1? Uh, the private group is always in Stitches Insiders. Okay, there you go. Always in Stitches Insiders. 
just Google that or whatever your search engine is. Search it in Facebook. Search it in Facebook. And uh, we'll pop up. You can post pictures there. We ask one of our groups to uh, post pictures of a Christmas quilt that they've made. And that's kind of fun. Get to see all that inspiration. And make sure you visit some of our other uh, YouTube channels. If you go to YouTube and you go to Always in Stitches, Noblesville, because there's two Always in Stitches, but if you go to the one that says Noblesville, you'll see a drop-down box and uh, all of our videos will be there. So make three Three wreaths, three trees, and three, I mean, no, three houses and three stars. Look at that little Santa. Isn't that just so cute? And our star. And there you go. And we'll see you on the 25th of next month. Bye.